Hello again. So today we're making sodium ethoxide um, from sodium and ethanol. Um, and we're going to be using this later on, perhaps, to react with nitromethane to uh, try and form some interesting products. Which may or may not work. Knowing me, probably won't work. But I thought this video might be interesting in its isolation anyway. Uh, before we get too far into it, I'd like to thank uh, my Patreon supporter. Um, I'm not sure even if he's subscribed to this channel, because this is the second one. Um, but a guy called Andrew Field. Thanks very much, man. He pledged $5, which does enable him to write on any one of these walls. Well, I have to write it, obviously, because he's not that close. But you can tell me what to write. Um, I should probably message him about that. Uh, yeah, I'm an organized character. But yeah, yeah I mean, if you want to get onto that, um, you can find the link below. Anyway. So, sodium metal will react with ethanol to form sodium ethoxide. Now, um, it will also react with water to form sodium hydroxide in a well-known sodium reaction, blah, 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 blah. Now, what we, we don't really want sodium hydroxide in this mix, because um, I feel like it will screw with things later on with the nitromethane. Um, so, what we have here is this thing called Bioflame, which I bought today. Um, I found it with the help, with a, with a tip off from a fellow Science Matters member. Um, thank you, Science Matters, once again. Um, now, this may look like 95% ethanol, the packaging looks about the same, but if you look right on the side, it is 99% ethanol, which is um, pretty significant because um, ethanol does form a 95% azeotrope with water. Um, not saying that the other 5% in 95% ethanol is water, but it does contain water, and whereas this will contain a lot less water than traces really, um, that 1% is probably unlikely to be a lot of water is probably, oh, I don't really know. There's some bitterin in there, but there's only a few milligrams of it. So, um, this is the most anhydrous ethanol I can get without actually buying really expensive anhydrous ethanol. Um, Alright, and we're going to be reacting with the sodium. This is the first time I think I'm going to use the sodium metal for an experiment that isn't just ditching it in water and watching it explode. So this is a nice thing. Um, this is about half of what was left of the 100 grams, so 50 grams. You can see in there is the, um, the metal casing. It's actually really difficult getting it out of the metal casing. I didn't think it would be so difficult, but it was. Because it's because it's really soft, you can't like pry it out with a screwdriver. Um, it's formed a bit of a white coating, you can sort of see that, because there's obviously a bit of water in the air and stuff that's, that's leached through in the, in the few months since I've opened this jar. Um, and so it's got a bit of hydroxide coating, but yeah. So we're going to be doing this in a pre-dried jar. I know I get a bit of crap for doing stuff in jars and plastic containers, but it's really done for convenience. Um, because once this reaction's done, I can shut it up and leave it to... When I when I need it, because I don't actually own the nitromethane yet, I should be getting that soonish. Um, yeah, and then then I can store it pretty easy. Um, all right. Uh, oh, and this also gives me opportunity to well, I don't really want to try it out, but to wear my face shield, which I picked up today as well, um, because. There's a chance this could be quite violent. Um, we're going to be adding small amounts of sodium pretty slowly, um, and we'll cool this right down because we don't want this bursting into flames. It's very flammable. I mean, if it bursts into flames, it'd be difficult to put out um, because the sodium will be on fire and it'll be a bit of a mess. So, everything slowly, cold, um, and with no water. And the fact that this is, has got little amount of water will mean this reaction is less violent, I assume because if there's like 2% water in it, it will still be quite violent as opposed to very, like a, you know, 0.2% water. I don't actually know how much water is in this. So, let's go out and try it. So, I did say I would conduct the reaction in this glass jar and I've got to say that's one of my worst ideas I've had in a little while. Um, because obviously it's going to be violent so it's going to boil off the ethanol and we just do it in a jar it's going to boil off and um, that'll stuff up the reaction I just got a bit carried away because I wanted to use my face shield but um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of times in the future where I can wear that face shield um, 
Yeah, so instead we have uh, cold ethanol, we've got 100 mils of it here in this flask and we're going to set this up for reflux um, and I'm going to grab 5 grams of the sodium and wash off as, dry off as much um, mineral oil as possible um, cut them into sort of small pieces and we're going to put the ethanol put the condenser on, set it with water and um, watch it go I don't have a stir bar in there because I think um, sodium and, and the other metals, alkali metals are one of the few things that can really screw the Teflon in the stir bar um, but if, if the reaction really needs a stir bar, I'll, I'll chuck one in later. Well, lower it in slowly so it smashes the flask. But um, it might destroy the the, uh, the stir bar, but it's not so much an issue seeing as they don't actually cost that much money. Um, hmm. Yeah. And I would put a bit like usually with when you're doing stuff with metallic sodium and you need a stir bar, you use like a paper clip or something. But I'm worried because we're making such a strong base in sodium ethoxide that it might react with um, not so much the iron but probably the chromium. It is a bit amphoteric so we might end up having a bit of a green solution and that will screw with things later on. Um, perhaps. So we're just not going to use a stir bar and I've just set it above the hot plate because um, why not. So alright, so let's get our sodium out of the jar. This piece of sodium is 4.8 grams, so we're just going to cut this up. Alright, now we get to chuck it in the ethanol. Put it back on. And then we'll hook up the water to the condenser, and yeah. <laughs> Alright, just taking on a slight greenish tinge for, I don't know, some reason. Because the chemistry just likes to do things sometimes. But yeah, so the sodium's reacting pretty nicely in there. Uh, definitely needed the condenser. Um, See the hydrogen coming off and the, and the ethanol dripping back down the sides of the flask. And yeah, we'll just let's do this thing for, um, I don't know how long it's going to take. Maybe half an hour. And um, yeah. Okay, it's only been five minutes and you can see uh, quite a majority of the sodium has reacted. Um, I think some of the ethanol did escape the condenser in the end, by the beginning, um, just because it got so hot um, and my condenser couldn't keep them all in um, because there was a bit of an ethanol smell. So, making sure I don't smoke any cigarettes around here for the next little while or turn on the hot plate or anything like that, and we should be fine. So, less than 10 minutes later and we're done. It's all reacted. Uh, we can't see any more bubbling. And then we're going to let this sit until it finishes cooling. Um, it's quite warm to the touch. Um, and then, yeah, that's uh, a lot better than reacting it in a jar. Um, it is a green colour, as you can sort of see. It's a bit more pronounced on the camera than it is in real life, which uh, maybe do with the mineral oil, maybe something coming from the forceps that it didn't quite wash off. Could be the steel casing that, that might be aluminium actually, um, that the um, sodium was stored in, like a bit of that could have been attached to um, a little bit of sodium. I don't know. It really wouldn't be exposed in a fire if the solutions were the right colour they were meant to be. Um, but 
yeah, there shouldn't be that much sodium hydroxide in there, so um, I guess we'll wait till I get the nitromethane to do anything with this. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.